everyone, my name is Dominique, and in today's project, we're going to be working on a diorama of a house that you get to customize yourself. Here is an example of one of the finished products that one of my friends did. This project is greatly inspired by the Project Row Houses, a community-based art program located in Third Ward, Houston, Texas. But before we get more into it, let's first start off with some of the history of Third Ward and the Project Row Houses. Third Ward is an area located in the southeast part of downtown Houston, Texas. Third Ward was founded in 1839 and after the Civil War era in the 1860s became one of the first predominantly black communities in Houston. Freed slaves were able to find blue collar jobs as mechanics, factory workers, bus drivers, working on railroads, and so many other jobs. Emancipation Park is a park located in the Third Ward area and holds great cultural significance. Created in 1872, founders wanted a place for community gathering and a spot to celebrate Juneteenth. Juneteenth is celebrated on June 19th, the day in 1865 when news finally reached Texas that the Civil War had ended, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued and that slavery had been abolished two years prior in 1863. The Emancipation Park celebrates their 148th anniversary this year. Another place that was significant to Third Ward was the El Dorado Ballroom. Open from 1939 through the 1970s, this place was a hub for black music and culture with performances of blues, jazz, R&B, and so much more. What we know today as Texas Southern University has deep roots in celebrating and promoting higher education for African-American people in Third Ward and in Houston, Texas. First established as the Houston Colored Junior College in 1927, then Houston College for Negroes in 1934, Texas State University for Negroes in 1947, and what we now call it Texas Southern University in 1951 to present times. As the African American population began to grow and flourish in Third Ward, so did the fight for equality and desegregation in Houston. The Wine Garden sit-in took place on March 4th, 1960, and happened at the Wine Garden grocery store at the lunch countertop. This peaceful demonstration was organized by Texas Southern University student leaders and eventually helped end segregation in Houston. After desegregation, Third Ward residents began to move out of the area. This led to local businesses losing customers and support, resulting in their closure. As a result, the local economy began to decline and in the 1990s, Third Ward had one of the highest crime rates in Houston once an area known as a successful black community. But when the decrease in support for local businesses began, so did the increase in the poverty rate and crime rate. And that's when seven visionary African-American people saw something special in this area and decided to create Project Row House. Project Row House was founded in 1993 by James Bettison, Burt Long, Jesse Lott, Rick Lowe, Floyd Newsom, Bert Samples, and George Smith. It started with a vision. What some people saw as a poverty-stricken area, these founders saw opportunity to transform the community. A block and a half of shotgun-style houses at the corner of Holman and Live Oak, and from there, they began the transformation. What is Project Row House, you might ask? a community program slash platform that uses art as a way to display the importance and impact cultural identity has on a person and their surroundings. Their mission statement is, we empower people to enrich communities through engagement, art, and direct action. A few facts about Project Row House is that it's partially inspired by German artist Joseph Boy's concept of a social sculpture which is artwork or installations that are interactive and strive to change our society. Project Row House also helps in the fight for preservation of historical third ward architecture in communities that face gentrification. Some of the services offered at Project Row House are artist gallery slash studios, local art programs, 
community development activities, residencies for single mothers, and monthly third ward community markets. What we'll be focusing on today is Project Row House's artists. They have artist rounds where they invite artists to display their work in individual houses biannually. Artists get to explore their creative identity while forming a positive space that honors culture and history. These artists get to display their artwork in one of the individual houses within Project Row House. And in some ways, the art inhabits the home, which is symbolism within itself. A lot of the artwork revolves around social and cultural issues that are local, national, and even global. And here are some examples of some of the past and present artist rounds that have happened within Project Grow House. When you look at these images, make sure that you pay attention to how the artist use words, phrases, and symbols to represent their thoughts and issues that they want to bring attention to. So I know that was a lot of information to withhold in a short amount of time, but I promise that all that information was very important to the base and the structure of this project. So in today's project, you're going to be creating your own project row house. So we are going to be making a diorama of one of the project row houses with a cardboard box. And just like the individual artists within the artist rounds, you will be customizing this house to an issue that you wanna bring awareness to or just simply displaying your personality. I really want everyone who does this project to express their individuality and express things that are important to them. So a few things to keep in mind and a few things to think about are what are some issues that are um, important to you and what are some things that you wanna bring attention to? And what are some symbols of your personality and what are some things that represent you as a person and your character all right now that all the explaining is done let's get started with the project the materials needed for this project are a box of medium size a cutting board paint brushes and at least one that's one to two inches in width, a bowl to put water in, a box cutter, scissors, a glue gun, and acrylic paint of whatever color you want. I'm getting started with the project and I'm cutting off the flaps of the box. So this box is going to be your project row house and those flaps are just gonna get in the way of being able to see inside of your project. So we're just gonna cut those off with a box cutter or you can even use heavier scissors. We'll also be cutting off one of the long sides of the box so you can see into the house um, more clearly. That side is not needed. I just cut off the, um, the handles of the box so it can create um, a window atmosphere so it looks more like a house. And now I'm cutting in a door to the house. This isn't 100% necessary, um, just as long as you have a door painted on the, the box. But I like to um, make it just a little bit more realistic and make the door um, able to open. Now I'm painting the house with white acrylic paint. I chose to paint the house um, white so it could resemble the Project Row house. Um, that's the main idea for this project is um, to do your own version of a Project Row house. And one of the significant parts of the characteristic and style of the Project Row house, which is a shotgun style house, is that, um, that they're painted white. So just so it can resemble that more, I, I decided to paint the box white. I'm now painting the inside wall white. 
so whatever I paint on top of it will be easier seen and, um, and have a, a nice base to paint over. I'm now doing a sketch with pencil over the white paint just so I can have a little sketch of the image that I'm going to be painting on eventually. Um, this is completely up to you guys on what you want to do. You can paint, you can draw, you can use mixed media, um, you could use clippings from magazines, words and phrases and images from magazines, or you can do something else. You can add texture to it, you can use found objects, whatever you want for this project that's going to allow you to express yourself. There are no um, limitations to what you want to do on the inside of the box. I apologize that a lot of this, um, a lot of the footage of me painting the inside of the box, my hair is in the way. I had no idea that that was happening, so apologies. This part of the project, I wanted to do something different for the other walls. So I got this plastic paper from um, a fake plant that I've had in my room for a couple of years now. And some of the flowers from that fake um, plant, I'm going to be hot gluing on to the sides. Like I said, this inside is completely um, up to you what you want to do with it and what um, uh, media you want to use. So just do whatever you want and have fun before I show you the end result of my box I'm going to get into um, my friend's box so as I was showing her how to create the project she came up with some amazing ideas and concepts I decided to make my project about black sustainability and how black people can maintain their culture and how black people can just be free from oppression within their mindsets. I really enjoyed this project because it let me be free as a black woman to express myself when um, the world is kind of silent about black women and about black issues. So I just used what I've experienced as a black woman to implicate the destiny of where pe people should go as human beings and how we should be treated. Here are a few pictures of my finished Project Row House, and I wanted to focus on social justice, especially with the death of George Floyd in the hands of police, and um, just how I've seen the world kind of come together and fight against um, injustice. The different shades within the fist being raised are the people from all over the world who have stand up against this and, and protest in other countries. and. The flowers inside represent the, the growth that I've seen from other people just speaking out against this and the growth that still needs to be done within our society, within our government, um, for us to really be where we need to be in 2020 when it comes to racial and social injustice. And, um, and it's kind of like hopeful um, just because of how much I was not expecting and how glad I am that so many people have spoken out against this. Here are the finished Project Row Houses side by side. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed the content and that you learned something new about Third Ward and um, Project Row House. I know that me and my friend enjoyed making these um, dioramas our Project Row Houses, so I hope you do too. Thank you. On a more serious note, um, I wanted to do this project on Third Ward um, about two months ago. That's when I started thinking about the project. And then on May 25th, 2020, um, the African-American man by the name of George Floyd was um, murdered and his life was taken away from him by a police officer. And as we all know and seen on the news, that this caused um, national and even global 
protest um, about police brutality and Black Lives Matter and how, you know, racial injustice needs to stop. And I was thinking to myself when I was making um, my box and thinking of ideas for my box, I was like, should I include that? Um, I was thinking, is it too controversial? And the more that I thought about it, the more I was like, it is completely not controversial and 100% um, necessary. Um, as a black person and a black woman, I couldn't make something that was a representation of myself and something that I, I wanted to bring awareness to without talking about that. Um, especially with everything that's going on now, you know, it was 100% what I needed to do. Um, and I just want to say for all our artists out here and people who love art and art lovers that um, art is needed right now more than ever. Um, art is a universal language, no matter what background you're from, no matter what culture you're from, what language you speak, how you look like, and your ability, um, art speaks to you. And art is a way to connect people. And in any time in history, we, we need art right now. And its importance and its significance is so great and needed at this time. Um, and I just wanted to mention that and that for everyone out there who loves art, um, please just take into consideration um, all the artists out there who are speaking about social justice right now, really look at their art and, and support them and, and make art that expresses um, how you feel and what you truly believe in and care for. So thank you.